Okay, so we're going to take a look at some of the things we can do with uh, the Howard Hughes Medical Institute's Biointeractive Biome Viewer. Um, you can access the homepage for Biome Viewer using the link in the description at the bottom of the video. And so if we go to that homepage for Biome Viewer, here's what we see, and then we'll click on the planet anywhere in the box to open up the app. And here's what we have. So within this, uh, the default is to look at biomes which are color coded. We can see on the left there. Uh, we can, if we wanted to, scroll through and look at anthromes, temperature data, precipitation, terrain or topography. But we're going to focus on the biomes. And some things we can do with the globe as we have it here is we can click and hold and spin the planet up, down, left, right, any way we like. So we can look at the western hemisphere if we want, southern, northern, etc. We can also scroll in and scroll out, zoom in and zoom out by using the mouse wheel. And it'll give you some idea of how far we can scroll in there, or we can scroll far enough out that it's not really useful except for seeing things in a really big scale. So we'll go back to about what the default is. Within this, if we go to any part of the planet, maybe we'll scroll a little bit more. So if we go to any part on the, the globe that we want to know some information about the climate or um, species richness of some of the vertebrate groups, we click on that part of the planet, we get a, a pin, and then information in the upper right in a box. So we can see I clicked on uh, a temperate deciduous forest in northern Pennsylvania. We've got a climatogram which shows us information about average monthly precipitation and temperature. And we just have to pay attention to the fact that that's a, a double y-axis figure. So we have precipitation on the left in the uh, columns and then temperature on the, on the right hand y-axis with the closed circles. And we have the numbers of three different vertebrate groups. Uh, reptiles, amphibians, and mammals, so 15, 27, and 56, the estimated species richness or number of species for those vertebrate groups. If we want some more information, basically to see the, the climate data in a larger format, better view of that, we can click on more and we get this window. So now we can see the monthly average precipitation and temperature data in more detail to get a better estimate of those monthly averages or the average annual temperature or precipitation. So for example, with the closed circles connected by lines here, our temperature, our average monthly temperature data, from those we could come up with a very reasonable average annual temperature. Here we could estimate that at about 10 degrees Celsius. This line right here looks about close to the average. And then for precipitation across the bottom, our average monthly precipitation values might be somewhere in the neighborhood of about 100 millimeters and that would be per the month. So to get an average annual uh, precipitation, we'd have to multiply that times 12. We can also look at a description of that site. There's a basic description of where the biome is, um, some broad information about the climate within that biome, and then also information about the biome itself. And on the right-hand side, information about some of the wildlife found there so we can click through either the group of mammals, reptiles, or the amphibians and get more information about those. So for example, you click on the American bullfrog and we get a, some description, some basic life history information about that species. So I'm going to click out of this. If we wanted to collect some information and test a hypothesis about patterns in terms of species richness or precipitation or uh, temperature patterns across latitudes or longitudes. We can collect data uh, using these using we can collect data using the biome viewer by collecting data from a variety of points and putting those data either into a spreadsheet or some other means that we can compare two or more variables among each other. So to do that I'm going to reduce the size of the biome viewer itself and go to a spreadsheet we have ready here in Excel in which we're going to be able to record some data um, based on a site's location, its coordinates, latitude and longitude, the species richness information we get, the numbers of reptiles, amphibians and mammals, and then the average annual precipitation and temperature which we can estimate um, from those data. 
And so, for example, if we were interested in determining if there's a pattern in species richness in those vertebrate groups um, from about approximately where the equator crosses the continent of Africa and going either north or south, um, we would collect and plot data from a variety of points along a transect relative to latitude. So we'll do a few points here going north towards the Sahara. So I've clicked on a point that's uh, very close to the equator, only 1.7 degrees north. And let me put in some of those coordinates here. And enter the species richness information as well. And if we were interested in precipitation and temperature, we could go ahead and add estimates of those. But we'll go ahead and just concentrate on some species richness data for now. And then another thing we can do here is if we want to keep a visual record of where those plots are that we're sampling, we can hit this save icon and it's going to drop a star on that point. And then we can actually come back and reference that point later if we've made a mistake in the spreadsheet or if we just want to uh, find more information about it. So I'll go ahead and put a couple of points in here. Star there approximately where that last point was. So there we have five points to get us started. So we can take these data and analyze those by either plotting a scatter plot of species richness against latitude. We could do longitude, but because I've done a, a transect basically staying in a fairly straight line north-south, longitude does not vary very much. So that would not be very interesting or not likely to be interesting. And so we'll take a look at that next, how we can um, do a scatter plot, for example, to analyze and see if there's a relationship between species richness and latitude.